My next guest definitely lived up to her nickname this past weekend, getting a raging victory over uh, Julia Stolarenko at UFC Fight Night on June 26th, getting a submission victory. It's Julia Avila back here on the program. Julia, how's it going? It's going so good. Thank you for having me on the show. Hey, it's uh, great to catch up with you. I know it's been a bit since we last talked. I was just looking on here. It was March was the last time we spoke, but a huge win. Um, Let's start first just with, uh, you know, getting that submission. I know you don't have many of those on the resume. How nice was that to add that to your arsenal and and on the resume? It's so nice. Um, I am known. Well, I I do a lot more jujitsu. I'm a a ground fighter. I train ground more than I do my striking. So, the, the fact that I'm now getting that on my resume is so rewarding to me because I spend so much time on the mats. And so, um, yeah, it's good. It's rewarding. Um, I've never had a, a rear naked choke finish. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. All, 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 all good. You know, you don't get, you don't get paid by the hour either. So you got that little, uh, you know, finish, uh, before it went right. to the judges scorecards <laughs> with is good. Was there anything about Julia that surprised you in the fight that maybe you weren't expecting? No, um, I expected her to be as durable as she is. I knew I wasn't going to finish her with my hands. Um, I knew she had a great armbar. She has eight of her nine finishes were by armbar, um, or eight of her nine wins, sorry, were all by armbar. So, I mean, be aware of the armbar. She has a good high kick, but I I think I might have hurt a foot with one of my checks, so um, that nullified that. Um, I know I'm strong. I have faith in that, and I have faith in my coaches, and they can puppeteer me the right way. So all I had to do was listen. How did you feel going into that third round? Because I think some people felt it might have been one apiece. How were you feeling going in there? Did you feel like you needed a finish just in case because of the judges? I needed to listen to my coach. My coach came up to me, and he said, hey, you, you lost that one. I need you to find a finish. And I said, okay, coach. And I sure did. I found a finish. Yeah. No, it all worked out. That's great. Uh, how did you celebrate after that win? Um, okay, so we went around and we did our, our interviews and stuff, and I was just so happy, so over the moon. Um, and I went back to my hotel room and I started popping bottles. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> now I, I had a, a couple glasses of champagne, and then we went to the pool. I still had my braids in, and I'm like, I don't think anyone's gonna know who I am. And uh, sure enough, as soon as I got in the water, they're like, Has anyone told you you look like Julia Avila? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look at my face. Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> What's that like, though? Like, I mean, it's you've only been the UFC a couple of years. Is that something you're getting used to being a celebrity, so to speak? Mm, celebrity? I don't know. I wouldn't say that. Um, well, if you I, get rec- as far as I'm concerned, if you get recognized, that that puts you in some sort of celebrity status. Call it what you want, but that's still pretty <laughs> cool, right? So, I I'm just you know I'm I'm just a girl. I'm, I'm super down to earth. A lot. Of, I get a lot of messages from people saying like, "Hey, I saw you. I just I didn't know." It, it, I could say hi and this and that. I'm like, guys, reach out to me. Say hi. Like, I try my best to be, you know, as approachable as possible. So, um, like, I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's kind of nerve wracking. Um, I know I'm put under my, a microscope, but like, this is what I wanted. I want. I want to be a good role model. So, um, I'm here. Bring it on. Exactly. And you're. Books. By the way, I can confirm you're very approachable. Do you remember our first in person interview? You gave me a hug after the interview, so I can confirm that you are in <laughs> fact very approachable. Yeah, I, I'm a hugger, and <laughs> I know that there's uh, there's people that aren't, and I'm sorry, I do, I tend this to... This was pre-COVID, prefer- by the way, in case anyone's wondering, I don't want people yeah. thinking I'm breaking any rules here, so there we go. Yeah, um, I just, I'm sorry, uh, I'm a hugger, and I'm, I just, I, that's me, that's me, I'm not going to try to be anyone else but me. Did this win mean a lot more for, for a variety of reasons in the sense that, you know, you're coming off a loss. You had a lot of fights that were rescheduled. I remember the Nico Montano fight. Even this opponent, I know, was a reschedule as, as well. And then I know there was some stuff with your, your last gym that you were at. Like, did that mean more just going through all that and getting such an impressive win at the end of it? It meant so much going through everything, all the ups and downs. Um, I had lost a good friend of mine um, to cancer May 30th. And... Uh, there was that. There was the losing, losing my gym and finding a home for my people and having the the, the weight of that. Um, so it, it wasn't a stress relief for me. I think it was for all of us, for everyone that is invested, anyone that knows the stories. Um, it was just a breath of fresh air, and it was so good. And I I, I wanted everyone to feel that win, that scream, that just happiness. And I I hope I hope. They, they did. 
What was that moment like seeing your husband after the fight? Because I know he's been a big sort of support system for you throughout this entire process and someone that I know you speak very highly of. Obviously, well, he's your husband, I would hope so, right? So Yeah, he's my everything. I um, Going up into the fight, I just I kept looking at him and I, I kept saying, I just want to make you proud. I just want to make you proud. And uh, he said, I already am. And um, it means the world to me that he's uh, by my side. He's my rock. So... It was, it was good. Um, also, uh, <laughs> when we were <clears throat> training at the PI, he would tell me to, like, move my head and do a little bit more of this, a little bit of that. And I said, hold the mitts. And so I started throwing them, and I started throwing a couple elbows, and I'm like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> there you go. Okay. It's, That's good. It's, it's a healthy uh, relationship. That's good. It's a healthy relationship. He doesn't forget to take out the trash. It's important. <laughs> I, I don't either. My uh, But I that's my job. I'm in charge of doing that at our, our household. But um, where so just so people know, like, where are you training now? How How is camp sort of structured these days with, with some of the changes that have happened? Well, so, um, you know, I'm no stranger to running my own camp. So uh, I ran my own camp. But I do have coaches and teammates that I rely on. Um, my my main coach, Randy Ray, uh, he's actually my AMI fighter. And so... Um, you know, how many AMI fighters coach two, not one, but two UFC wins. Uh, it's unheard of. So, like, I, I, I have them, but I'm going to start cross-training, hopefully a little bit more with uh, James Krause over at Glory MMA, if he will have me. Um, I do, uh, we are now affiliated under Combat Base um, with Chris Howder, Chris and Melissa Howder. So, our jiu-jitsu is phenomenal. It's world-class. It's, you know, legendary. So, um I think I'm in good hands. I think I'm uh, making the right, taking the right steps towards um, what I think could be the road to, to a championship eventually. Yeah, I had heard that you were tr- doing some training, or we're going to do some training at Glory with James Krause, but I didn't, I didn't know. Um, like, I was trying to look on your Instagram, and I was like, I didn't really see anything that, and I was like, I don't know if this is a rumor or whatever. But you just mentioning that made sense. What's the connection there? Because I know you fought Gina Mazzani was over there. Was was it that, or what? What sort of brought you over to Glory? So um, I tweeted something, you know, just about feeling lost, and um, I got a, an overwhelming response from a plethora of coaches, uh, from CSA down to people down in Texas, and um, James Krause said, come through, and I lost it. I had no idea he even knew who I was, um, and this was after Gina uh, had moved over, and, you know, she reached out to me, and I told her the story of what had happened, and uh, I reached out to him and I, I wanted to make sure it was okay with her first so I talked to her um, and she said yeah come through we can be training partners and I talked to him and explained the situation and uh, yeah he welcomed me um, I went there I hung out with him I went to, I've gone a couple of times but um, I think I'm gonna start spending a little bit more more time down there or up there I guess would be her geographically <laughs> Now, as a Canadian, my geography is not very good in the U.S., so how far of a commute is it for you to get over there to Glory? It's uh, seven hours to okay, drive. Yeah. Six, six to seven hours, depending on how you drive, um, which is fine, but uh, because I have my responsibilities here, I would do, like, Thursday night to Friday morning and then drive back. Okay. Then, that makes sense. Uh, drive 14 hours to get two or three hours of training, which is worth it, um, but... It takes its toll, especially when I'm in camp, and I didn't want to push my body to that limit just yet for this past camp, so I think in the future, um, you know, if I would have gotten that 50 Gs, maybe I could have gotten, like, a flat or somewhere, you know, a room to rent and stay up a week at a time, but I guess my performance just wasn't good enough. Well, I think, yeah, it's, I don't know how they determine that sometimes because I thought you would have had one for sure just with, you know, the performance and everything. But uh, who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, I know it's fresh. I know you're already back in the gym. Uh, when are you looking to get back in there? Do you have an idea of when you want to have your next fight? Uh, so I actually i am doing a, I, I got a movie role. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you heard it first here. Uh, I actually haven't told anyone. Um, so I got a movie role uh, that... I'm going to be working on here in July. It's just a supporting role. It's kind of fun. Um, and then, I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping two more times before the end of the year. So wherever that may fall, um, I just keep training. 
Okay, you just glanced over the actress thing, by the way, which I think is awesome, and it doesn't surprise me at all. You got a good personality for that type of stuff. What, um, what, how did this come together, and have you done any acting before? Uh, so, I mean, in high school, I did like one act, and you know, I actually, um, I did uh, speech um, and debate. Oh, cool! And I actually, I, I was fourth in the state in, in California, so I, I did pretty well. Um, so, I have done a little bit of acting. Uh, I. I I'm not afraid of audiences <laughs> or the camera. So uh, someone actually reached out to me and they, they said, hey, I have a great role for you. Um, how do you how do you feel about it? And I was like, let's do it. I, I mean, I got one life to live. Is it like a do you know what the movie's about? Is it like a comedy or thriller or horror or what? It's an action film nice. um, with some comedic relief. So it's like uh, it's right up your alley then because you, you're sort of both right. You fight and then, you know, you joke around a bit, too. So it's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be playing um, a cop. So, uh, yeah, it's called The Squad. um, And uh, there's bikinis, guns, and drugs. (laughs) There you go. Okay. Well, I'll be (laughs) keeping tabs up for that for sure. What's the plan for the rest of the week? Some training, obviously. You're in the the room right now. But uh, some good food, I imagine. Like, what's on the agenda for the rest of the week? Um, So, this is my third training session this morning. Uh, Nice. Yeah, yeah. I have my coffee. Of course. Uh, but I, didn't, I didn't get to splurge during camp, so um, I'm splurging a little bit with my, my fun coffee. And, um, yeah, it's just business as usual. I, I might have some wine a little later, which I'm really excited about. But um, <laughs> other than that, you know, just pretty basic. That's good. Keep it simple, as they say, right? It's all good. Uh, Julia, thanks so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Uh, anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last yeah. word. Yes. Uh, thank you so much to everyone in Panda Nation for believing in me, for trusting in me, and um, being a part of the Outsiders. Um, James Krause, thank you for opening up your doors to me for that you know, brief sense of time. I know I'm going to be working really hard to develop and uh, – earn a friendship there and um everyone over at combat base with chris and melissa howder thank you again for welcoming us into your 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 organization um if you like to follow me uh, i'm available on all social media platforms at raging panda mma um be on the lookout for some merch and uh, be on the lookout for my movie thank you so much